What's up guys? Uh, literally just like two minutes ago I got done testing uh, the S30V military. Cleaned up the rope and uh, decided since I need to sharpen anyway and it has a micro bevel, uh, I can sharpen it easily on the sharp maker. I thought about just reprofiling it to a steeper angle, but I think I'll just keep this geometry for a while. And uh, many, many, many people have requested that I sharpen with a sharp maker. So I figured I would oblige and make a little uh, sharp maker video. This is not uh, a piece of equipment that I use often, I must admit, but I do use it. Uh, for the longest time before I started freehanding, I would set my bevel on the sh on the Edge Pro, and after that would get dull, I would just touch it up with a sharp maker. So my sharp maker has seen much use, but just recently, since I started freehanding, I pretty much haven't touched the sharp maker or the Edge Pro, unless I'm doing somebody else's knives. So I think I'll just go ahead and sharpen with this thing. Uh, the Edge isn't as dull as I would like. Uh, it can still roughly, very roughly cut uh, foam book paper. So what I'm going to do is just dull the edge a little bit. That should do the trick. Yep. Pretty much non-existent bevel now. I mean, <laughs> I might have done too much damage to bring back. I don't know but we'll see. Uh, I am going to use the 40 the 40 uh, 40 degree side and I'm not going to use the corners. I'm a little unorthodox with this thing and I'll show you why. Not going to use the corners and I am going to use the ultra fine stones uh, eventually so I did show you that it's it's not sharp at all like I mean it'll barely I guess it does cut that, but I mean the knife is not sharp. It, it's just kind of such a steep angle that it's going to cut anything, uh, even if it is dull. So I'm going to check focus. This thing's going to move around a little bit, so it may come out of focus every once in a while. I'm not using corners. I'm just using the flats, and uh, I'll show you why. This is not something that uh, you find in the DVD. This is. J. Davis 882's proprietary sharp maker uh, technique. I'm not advocating this. People just ask me to show them how I use the sharp maker. So, figured I would oblige. It is much faster to me doing it this way. Instead of doing alternating strokes, which are really slow, uh, I can just hold the knife vertical and uh, work work up a burr through the whole length of the edge, which we do have already. So I switch to the other side, same deal, just keep the knife completely vertical. Till you form a burr, which we don't have yet. Another good thing about this technique is you don't round your tip off. Uh, since you're not pulling off the stone, you, you never are in danger of rounding your tip off. And it's just much, 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 much faster this way. You could periodically stop and check for a burr, which I don't seem to be able to form right now. Probably just because of the amount of damage I did to the edge. That was a mistake. I didn't do that on purpose. When I feel like I might be done on this stone, I'll just do my little light alternating strokes. Just to clean that burr off at this low grit. 
and uh, I'm not even sure that I'm ready to go to the next grit. Uh, it's better, but it's not where I want it to be, so I'm going to do a little bit more work. I am going to use alternating strokes, uh, just so I can keep keep my bevel as consistent as possible. Consistency is the key with sharpening, especially with a system like this. Uh, even if you're not perfectly vertical, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. That's what people tend to uh, not realize is they're focusing on keeping their angle so perfect that they're constantly switching because they're constantly correcting for what they think is a mistake. When really all you need to do is keep your angle consistent. It doesn't matter if one side's perfectly 40 and the other side is 44. Uh, as long as you keep it consistent, the knife will get sharp, extremely sharp. I think we might be done on this this stone now. Pretty sure we are. Uh, I dulled the edge a little bit more than I should have using this system because it does have its limitations. But we'll work with what we got and we'll try and get it as sharp as we can done with the medium stones. I'm going to check my time. 13 minutes. This is going a little bit slower than I wanted it to. Switching to the fine stones. Again, I'm going to use the flats. And I'm just going to do my, my own proprietary motion. Until I have a burr. which I'm pretty sure I do. So I switch to the other side. Just making sure I keep my angle consistent. This is a very good trainer for freehand sharpening, by the way. Doing these up and down motions, concentrating on keeping your angle consistent. It's a good a uh, good analog for freehand sharpening in that you have to keep your wrist locked in in order to keep your angle consistent. Okay, going to go ahead and test sharpness again. Pretty sharp. Very sharp. It could be sharper, and uh, I've got much sharper edges with a sharp maker. But again, I'm going really, really fast, and I dulled the edge just a bit more than I would like to uh, for use on a sharp maker. Sharp maker is a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, it should be called the sharp keeper because a knife does need to be fairly sharp to begin with to benefit from the sharp maker. Uh, if it's extremely dull, then you're going to need to move on to something else. A little bit more aggressive. But if you have a knife, say like a Spyderco with a very acute bevel from the factory, uh, you can keep it sharp almost indefinitely with a system like this. And uh, when your edge eventually gets too thick to use on these preset angles, which it will in a few years maybe, uh, you need to send it to somebody like me who can thin the edge out. So I'm just finishing up with light alternating strokes on the white stones. Then I'm going to move to the ultra fine stones. And uh, <clears throat> people ask about mirror polish all the time. These stones are actually capable of mirror polishing. They're the exact same grit that I use. Uh, my Spyderco 306 UF stone is literally the exact same grit as these stones. Uh, the reason people don't get a mirror polish with these stones is because the stone isn't hitting the whole bevel. 
Uh, if the stone was hitting the whole bevel, you would get a fairly good mirror polish. Uh, if you had walked up through the grits prior to these stones. You, you can't take a very coarse uh, edge and then hit it on a very fine rod or stone and expect it to get a mirror polish. You have to have a fairly refined edge to get a mirror polish. So you can't take something like a 400 grit edge and run it on a 5000 grit stone and expect a mirror polish. It's just not going to happen like that. You have to progress through the grits and get finer and finer and finer until you're until you're eventually mirrored. I could have just broke my tip off there, but luckily I didn't. I'm really speeding through this for the sake of uh, not having a a huge file to upload. But I should get fairly good results anyway. These UF stones, for anybody who is interested in them, uh, they are a huge improvement over the stock stones. You can, in fact, get a hair whittling edge with these stones. Uh, my very first hair whittling edge I ever got was using the Shark Maker alone. So, if that tells you anything, the Shark Maker is definitely a very capable system. Going to go ahead and test sharpness much sharper that's that's a very 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 sharp edge extremely sharp edge I don't know if you guys can hear it but there's virtually like no resistance in that cut I mean it just glides through the paper you can do some very 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 light finishing touches finishing passes just to clean the edge up a little bit more. Now I'll strop it. This is just my same old strop from Knives Plus. Excellent little strop, comes preloaded. About 20 bucks. Should last you a lifetime. That's a damn good deal. Gonna keep stropping. Do about five more strokes on each side. Then one last stroke. Alright, now we're gonna test. Extremely sharp edge. So, I took a fairly damaged edge and brought it back to damn near hair whittling sharp in about 15 minutes. So, Anybody who is uh, using the Sharp Maker at home, don't feel undergunned because it is capable. It just takes a, it takes a little getting used to. I will admit, it does take a little getting used to. But the main tip I can give is use the 40 degree setting and stop focusing so much on keeping your angle consistent. I mean, uh, keeping your angle perfect. Just try and keep it consistent. I'm going to see just for... Uh, just for kicks if this thing will whittle hair. Yes, it will. I know you guys can't see that, but I'm going to try and whittle it and then show it to you. It just it literally just whittled, but I can never seem to do things on camera as well as I can off camera. There it went. This is how I normally hold a knife when I'm doing hair whittling stuff anyway, so I'm going to try and zoom in and see if you can see that hair. There you go. See that hair? That's what I just whittled with this knife. So, 
dull to hair whittling in about 15 minutes with a sharp maker no less so if your bevel is less than 40 degrees uh, and you can keep a consistent bevel or consistent angle then you can get some pretty pretty good results with this thing definitely worth the $50 price tag so anyway the people who requested this video I hope you enjoy it well everybody else too I hope y'all enjoy it and always uh, thanks for watching